Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at how I would shop for DDR5 in December 2023. Um, and yeah, we're, we're just going to get right into it. So let's get started with, you know, PC part picker. So the first things first is we're going to tick off 288 pin DDR5. And we're also going to tick off that we want unbuffered DIMMs, because registered DIMMs are what you need for like a Threadripper or a Xeon CPU. Uh, which, uh, yeah, we're not going to concern ourselves with those. I'm only going to be looking at memory for, like, AM5 and LGA1700 sockets, uh, and neither of those support registered DIMMs. So, yeah, you don't accidentally want to buy a memory kit of registered DIMMs, though I'm pretty sure those memory kits should be more expensive because they have, like, physically more components on them, so that, that would also be an exp like, arguably an expensive mistake. Um... So anyway, uh, we're not going to concern ourselves with 2x8 configurations because they kind of, like, if you absolutely need, you know, the cheapest RAM, then, yeah, like, you know, 16 gigs of RAM for $40 is obviously going to save you some money compared to 32 gigs of RAM for $75, but if you care about performance, 2x16 has a clock-for-clock -clock performance advantage, and it's really not that expensive, right? Especially, like, if, you, if you're thinking, like, oh, I'm going to buy a fast kit of 2x8, well... And that's still not very fast. So, yeah, when, once you get to, like, a 6,000 rated 2x8 kit, like, you're looking at basically 2x16 prices. So, yeah, 2x8 is a bad idea, and so we're just not going to concern ourselves with that. And so we're going to take a look at 2x16 first. Now, uh, also, I guess, while on the topic of 2x8, don't do, like, I've seen this a few times, do not buy four memory sticks of DDR5. Just in general, okay? Um, it, it can work, but um, DDR5 motherboards all use daisy chain memory topologies, and more importantly, because DDR5 runs at very, very high speeds, splitting the signal between more memory sticks is bad, okay? The spec allows for it because one of the core, like, design features of DDR is that it's supposed to be cheap and upgradable, but running four sticks of DDR5 should, as far as I'm concerned, only be done if you need 128 or 192 gigs of memory. If you need less RAM than that, so if you want like a 16 gig setup, 32 gig setup, 64 gig setup, 96 gig setup, oh, 48, I forgot about 48 gig setups. Like, if you want any of these like sensible capacities, <laughs> and 96 gigs isn't really that sensible, but um, you know, if, if you want like a, like, if you want a capacity that can be achieved with just two memory sticks, only use two memory sticks. Don't use four, because it really messes with the, the signaling when you have multiple memory sticks that the signal has to go to. Um, and that's why, like, a lot of, like, 4x16 setups, and uh, actually, especially, like, once you get up to the, like, 4x32 and 4x48 setups, but, like, 4x16... Or four, like 4x8, 4x16, 4x24, you're literally just creating more like signaling issues for the memory system for no extra benefit. Like there is no performance uplift to it. There is no there's no reason to do this other than the aesthetics of populating all of the memory slots. And I'm gonna like look if you populate all of your memory slots on a DDR5 motherboard for the for aesthetic reasons. You deserve whatever stability problems that creates, as far as I'm concerned, because you should not do that. Um, don't do, like, run as few memory sticks as possible, okay? Not literally one, because then you're going to be stuck in, like, single channel. We're going to pretty... <laughs> Man, why is DDR5 so complicated? Because technically, one, like, you know, each memory stick has, like, two sub-channels and the... But anyway, um, yeah, so basically with DDR5, you want to have two memory sticks. You do not want to have more than two memory sticks. Um, if you absolutely need the extra capacity, so like 128 gigs, 192 gigs, 
then you're forced to get four memory sticks because they don't make higher density memory chips than that. Um, and so in that scenario, it's like, yeah, you don't really have a choice, but be prepared that it's probably going to be very unstable um, or really slow. One of the two, right? Because the whole issue with these like multi sticks, like with sticks where you're running two memory sticks per uh, memory channel or and then especially once you get up to like 4x32 and 4x48 you're running four, four ranks of memory so there's actually four sets of memory chips connected to each memory channel um you are just putting an incredible amount of load on the memory controller and so the like signaling gets really difficult because the memory controller is basically trying to send signals to four memory chips at the same time. That's just how DDR works. And so you have either, like, either you can try to, like, manually tune everything to work, which is going to take forever, because at those capacities also, like, stress testing those kinds of memory configurations is just going to take forever, because you have a lot of RAM to, like, you have a lot of memory addresses to get through. Um, and then the other option is, like, you can run it at really low speeds. Um, DDR5 does actually, like, officially go as low as, like, DDR5 3600 when running, like, 4x32 or 4x48 memory setups. So, you know, those are, like, absolute worst-case scenario as far as I'm concerned for DDR5 is if you're trying to, like, if you need a lot of capacity, like, just be prepared that it's going to cause, potentially cause, going to cause a lot of issues. If you don't need a ton of capacity, don't run more than one memory stick per channel. Just don't do it, okay? Your memory controller will thank you, and your OS will actually also thank you because it won't crash so much, probably. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, like, combining two 2x8 two kits together, bad idea. Don't do it. Um, so anyway, now let's move on to 2x16. And again, do not run 4x16. 4x16 is stupid. If you put four 16 gig sticks into your LGA1700 motherboard or AM5 motherboard, you are dumb. Okay? Like, you are just dumb. <laughs> Don't do that. There is, a, like, technically there's a chance that it'll work okay, but you are literally making your memory controller's job more difficult for no reason. Don't do it. Anyway, um, buy 2x32 instead. Your memory controller will thank you by not crashing as much. Um... Also, your memory training should take slightly less time if you don't have multiple memory sticks, but I've not tested that. So, anyway, um, 2x16. Now, for 2x16, uh, we have some interesting options in the form of, like, this, uh, I think it's the T-Create Classic kit. Yeah, because our goal with DDR5 is basically always to just buy Hynix DDR5 of some kind. Um... And so the interesting thing here is that Team Group actually, like, at least in the Amazon listing, specifically advertises that they have these Hynix memory chips in this. Uh, the reason I say specifically in the Amazon listing is that on Newegg, yeah, that that's not mentioned anywhere as far as I can tell that these are supposedly going to be Hynix. So I'm not sure how much I would uh, count on this, uh, like, guarantee from, from Team Group. Like, as far as I know... From other people, these ha these kits have very consistently always come with Hynix memory chips. I have heard that apparently, like, the silicon quality has gotten worse on them recently. I'm not sure how true that is. Maybe somebody bought a, like, maybe somebody has a CPU that, mem that has a trash memory controller and they bought a kit and it was, like, really bad, but it's not the kit's fault. It's actually their CPU's memory controller that's at fault. But, you know, like, I don't, I'm not going to be buying, like, multiple sets of these sticks just to check if like the silicon quality has changed over time or if on average it's worse or something so um yeah so this is like sort of the i want hynix and i want it as cheaply as possible uh option um because yeah it doesn't really get cheaper than this and then if you want more safe bets then for ddr5 5600 uh there's a very simple rule uh, if the cast latency is lower than 28, it's got to be Hynix, uh, which doesn't really give you a lot of options, and these options aren't very cost-effective, because at around $100, you could also get a DDR5-6000 kit um, in, like, CL32, and that would also be Hynix, and your XMP is faster, right? So... Yeah, and it actually ends up being potentially slightly cheaper, so, like, yeah, these old, 
Oloy blade memory sticks right here. These are in 32, 38, 38, 1.35 volts. This is just a pretty standard Hynix DDR5 bin. Um, at this point, even at 6000 CL32, I would expect these memory sticks to be primarily 16 gigabit Hynix A die because Hynix M die is the like for like 16 gigabit M die is the first memory chip that Hynix was making for DDR5. And like technically, I guess there could still be some supply of that lying around in warehouses or something. Maybe it's even still in production, but it's been getting less and less common. So even in like low speed kits, it's been pretty typical. And I would consider 6,000 to be relatively low speed. Um, yeah, like it's been pretty common to get like 16 gigabit Hynix A die. And the distinction between 16 gigabit M die and A die is that A die will clock to like over 7,200 easily, whereas M die can technically go over 7200 but it's way more difficult because um you can sort of think of it as m die basically being sort of like yeah it's just harder to clock uh as high um so like i have seen examples of m like 16 gigabit m die managing to get all the way up to like 7600 but um same like the same thing can be done a lot easier with 16 gigabit a die so generally if especially if you're on intel you actually really want the a die based memory sticks but these days a die sort of shows up in just about every speed bin of of like any any hynix bin is liable like might end up being a die so like this and honestly at this point i would assume that even this would be a die um pretty regularly so yeah if you're on amd like i would i would like on amd you actually don't care if you get a die or m die because on amd uh with the way the am5 memory controllers work basically in terms of speeds that you actually want to run uh most C like every cpu should be able to do 6000 um and then most cpus should do 60 uh, like 6200 6400 is technically possible but even on the newest agsas not all cpus will be able to do 6400 um so with amd like in the one-to-one -one mode so with amd you don't really care if you get a die or m die because the two-to-one mode is actually terrible all the way up until like ddr5 7800 or 8000 um so there's basically like and and doing DDR5 8000 on AMD is like very much, you know, you need to get lucky with your memory controller and there's not that many motherboards that will do those kinds of speeds. So with AMD you actually just kind of don't care what flavor of Hynix memory chip you get because if you actually like uh, unless you plan to make your life difficult, um, you're going to run your memory at something between 6,000 and 6,400, depending on how lucky you got with your CPU. Uh, and then if you are planning to make your life difficult, then yeah, you would specifically want a die and you also specific, like there's like a very limited selection of motherboards that you would actually want to run those sticks on. Um, but uh, like for, for like a normal gaming build based around like a 7,800 X3D, you actually don't care what flavor of Hynix memory chip you get. Um, it just doesn't matter, especially with the 7800X3D. Now on Intel, you would generally prefer to get ADI, but we'll, we'll get to the like guaranteed ADI bins eventually. Um, anyway, so yeah, we have like 6000 CL32, 6000 CL30. Um, actually that's also just like a straight up Hynix bin. Um, this is 3038, so slightly lower cast latency. There's so many different flavors of, of Hynix speed bins. I wonder if we might get a 3036 bin in this speed range. Maybe from Patriot? No, this is a 6400CL32. So with a kit like this, and Patriot's really good about including multiple XMP profiles on their memory sticks. Um, but uh, 6400, like if, you're, if you have an AMD CPU, the like 6400 might not work, okay? Uh, and yes, 6400CL32 at, I'm assuming, oh no, this is 1.4 volts. But even then, like, um, well, I'd say there's a very, like, the chances of this being Hynix m die are significantly lower, except I'm not sure that Hynix m die is, like, 16 gigabit m die is at all common these days. But this is almost certainly going to be a die. Um, just because as the speed gets higher, the, like, a die becomes more and more common. So... Anyway, but on AMD, you would potentially basically end up either downclocking the kit. Like, if it, 
I'm, a, I'm gonna assume that it has multiple XMP profiles, but if it doesn't, you could always just drop it to like 6200 and that'll almost certainly work, and if that doesn't, you could drop it all the way down to like 6000. Um, and yeah, and 6400 CL32 is the equivalent of like 6000 CL30, so you could just drop the cast latency yourself and that should still work. Um, so, yeah, like, the, like I would not... Like, the, the main reason I point this out is that, like, I far too often see people with, like, AMD systems where they're, like, hell-bent on running memory speeds that aren't going to work, and they're, like, and then they blame the the motherboard or the CPU. I was like, why is my system so unstable? And it's because, it's like, just run it at 6,000. <laughs> like, evidently, you don't know how to run a stress test, so why are you overclocking your memory? So anyway, um, yeah, 6400CL32. On Intel, this would be completely reliable. Um, I'm, okay, maybe I shouldn't say completely reliable. I would be very surprised if this didn't work on an Intel system, though. I would be not that surprised if it didn't work on AMD, um, is the best way that I can... Yeah, that, that's the better way of putting it. So anyway, other options. We have another 6032, 6432... Um, I wonder if the timings are any lower on this. Oh, we've got a 3239. Not that it really matters. Um, so, like, the one one or two ticks of, like, any primary timing on DDR5 is just really not going to make too much of a difference in terms of performance. Um, I have a 6000 CL30 in 3036. So this is basically the most aggressive bin uh, that you can get for 6000. At least as far as I know. I haven't seen, like, a 6000 CL28, even though technically that should be possible. I haven't seen any memory vendor actually commit to something like that. Um, as a actual, like, XMP profile. But anyway, so, yeah, th this looks like, like, this is a perfectly solid kit of Hynix memory and, like, really everything in this list, right? Like, 6,000, like, 6,032, 30, 6,432, 6,230, 32 would also be, but 6,200 as a speed is, like, really unpopular, so, um, yeah, I don't think we're gonna, yeah, we're not seeing any 6,200 rated kits here. So, for AMD, if you don't want to, like, worry about, you know, w mem like, the memory controller being actually able to deal with your memory kit, you're going to want to buy a 6,000 rated kit. And for Intel, it doesn't matter. You can buy 6,400, 6,000, it'll be fine. Um, so let's keep moving up the, the speeds and also the cast latencies. So uh, from 6,400 up, so we're just going to skip straight to 6,800. Actually, I guess we could see if there's anything interesting at 6,600. So... For 6600 and up, you want a cast latency of like 34 and lower. Um, and at this point, we get options like 6600 CL34. This is going to be A die, Hynix. Yeah, this is going to be Hynix A die. Um, this should work on any Intel system without. And I mean, there might be some really garbage motherboards out there where this might not run, especially with 12th gen. But I like. Kind of doubt it. Also, that is a... Like, prices on DDR5 have come down, like, a lot. But anyway, so... Yeah, so we have, like, 6,634, 6,834. Um, this is, like, the same price again. Also, like, just a solid... Like, this... Yeah, this is just a... Dare I say generic Hynix 16 gigabit ADI, uh, ADI bin. So... Yeah, and the point of getting, like, a Hynix 16 gigabit ADI is that this speed, like, these, like, Hynix 16 gigabit ADI will regularly overclock to whatever your memory controller is capable of. Um, well, whatever your CPU's memory controller and your motherboard is capable of. So if you have a really good CPU on a good motherboard, you might be able to take sticks like these all the way to, like, DDR5-8000, potentially. Um... If you have a garbage CPU on a good motherboard, you're probably going to get stuck at like 7600 or something. And if you have a garbage CPU on a garbage motherboard, 6800 is probably the limit, um, sadly enough. Like, so this is, this is like the highest XMP for Intel CPUs that I'd feel confident in, like, this should work on every chip. Like, I don't think there's any Intel CPUs so bad that they couldn't run 6800 for like 13th gen or 14th gen. Though, maybe there are some other boards that might drag that even lower. Um, 
because that's like the like with with ddr4 your motherboard didn't like mattered but not that much unless you were really pushing the speeds but the issue with ddr5 is like ddr5 is speed that's the whole point right like ddr5 is inherently very high speed so it cares about the motherboard quite a lot um and 6800 is like it, and if you have like a solid motherboard this should work um, and by solid motherboard, I don't mean you need to spend like $500 or something like this should work even on like 300 ish dollar motherboards and some $200, like 200 around. Yeah, like going above $200, you should start seeing boards where this regularly works. Um, but uh, yeah, as we keep going past this, well, you get up to 7200. Um, and this is just like a hard like th this is fixed ADI. Like, th this can't be anything other than Hynix 8i, um, 16 gigabit, and, uh, yeah, if, if you're looking for, like, memory to overclock with an Intel CPU, stuff like this uh, is a very solid option, but it, there is a concern that some CPUs won't actually be able to run the XMP on these sticks. Um, r like, yeah. That, that is actually a real concern once you get to DDR5-7200, is not all Intel 13th gen and 14th gen will run speeds this high, and 12th gen even more so. Um, though I don't know why you'd be buying 12th gen at this point, considering that like 13th gen and 14th gen are just better. So, yeah. Anyway... Uh, also, I wouldn't generally recommend that you, like, upgrade your mem like, buy new memory just because it has a higher speed, because a CPU upgrade will generally give you much larger performance gains than, like, like, go like upgrading from a 6000, like, a DDR5-6000 kit to a DDR5-7200 kit is going to make, like, less of a performance difference than upgrading your CPU. So, I would kind of view that as wasting money. Um, you know, upgrading from a, like, slow DDR5 kit to a faster DDR5 kit that just doesn't really seem very cost-effective. Um, when, for, like, the price of three DDR5 kits, you could potentially just upgrade the entire CPU. Um, now, obviously, if you're already on, like, a 14700K or something, well, no, you're probably building a new system at that point, right? So you wouldn't have, like, garbage RAM to start with. So anyway, um, yeah, so at like 6800 to 7200 or even 6600, you're looking at like CL34 or lower. Also, so something like the 6600 CL32, yeah, that's a Hynix speed bin. It's just a bit of a weird one because most manufacturers seem to go in like steps of 400 and then like Corsair and I guess Patriot as well had a 6600 bin. Like Patriot had it in 34. Uh, Corsair has it in 32, um, as in cast latency 32, not that that really makes much of a difference. Um, but yeah, like these are all going to be just Hynix 16 gigabit ADI because the speeds are too high to be, like, the, the funny thing is, like, MDI can hit these kinds of speeds, but not with the reliability required for XMP profiles. So, Yeah. Actually, here we have a 7034. And yeah, like 3442 at 7000. Hynix A die. And uh, for $110, like that's actually a very solid price. So, yeah, tons of options. And then, of course, if you keep moving the speed slider up, we start getting into. Like, once you go above 7200, you don't really have to worry about the cast latency anymore because it is physically impossible for most DDR5 chips to hit speeds higher than DDR5-7200 whatsoever. Um, right? So, like, yeah. So you don't really have to be worried about, like, what cast latency you're buying at these really high speeds because it's all Hynix 8i. Um, literally all of it. <laughs> So, 7,234, Hynix 8i, 7,436, Hynix 8i, because, like, that speed, like, the speed alone disqualifies any other memory chip from being in that memory kit currently. 7,636, also. Um, but it is worth noting that, like, 7,400, 7,600, um, se like, these are gonna put, like, serious, uh, like, Basically, you need to get lucky with your CPU for these to work at XMP. Or you're going to be... And no, you still need to get lucky. Because the thing is, like, you might... 
get a CPU where it's like, oh yeah, if you fiddle with the voltages enough, eventually it'll work, but in, in many cases you'll end up with a, you, you might get a CPU where even after fiddling with the voltages for hours, it still won't work. You know, it might get less unstable because honestly, like with some of these kits like 7600, you know, you put that on a 4DIMM Z790 motherboard and depending on your CPU, that could be anything from like you're not getting into Windows to uh, you do get into Windows, but things just constantly crash um, at 7600. Like this is like w once we get into these speeds, this is a real compatibility problem for for motherboards and CPUs. Um, and, and I say both because you can get some CPUs out there that are just so incredibly good that they'll run 8,000 on basically everything. Uh, and you get some CPUs where it's like, no, you need the absolute best motherboard just to be able to do 7,600. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of a concern. And then once you get into the speeds like DDR5-8000, it's just like you're potentially going to be buying multiple CPUs before you find one where this XMP profile works. Um, yeah, and your motherboard choices for these speeds are basically you buy an Apex, as in the Asus Z790 Apex or the Apex Encore, because um, other motherboards literally... I mean, it's not impossible. Again, if you get extremely lucky with the CPU, it might even work on like a... on a, on a 4-dimmer, but generally speaking, if you want to maximize your chances of these XMPs actually working, you want an Apex. Because um, there aren't really any other options. Um, so, yeah. Um, so basically these speeds, like, admittedly at this point, they are not insanely expensive. Uh, they are still a significant premium over, like, just buying, a, say, a, even a 7200 kit, right? Like, <laughs> that's, but that's literally, I think, a 50% price increase. Also, it's not going to be 50% faster. Uh, just going from 7200 to 8000 8, isn't a 50%, like, clock speed difference, so it's not going to be 50% faster from that, from just that, like, from that alone. But anyway, um... Where was I going with this? Right, so it is quite a bit more expensive. The XMP is probably not going to work. Um, and so these kits, like, I see them as basically, like, kind of novelty, novelty kits where it's like, and, you know, it's kind of, and, and the thing is, like, you can still get defective memory sticks, which is, like, so even saying, like, oh, at least you get the guarantee that the memory kit itself is capable of doing that speed, which is, like, true as long as it didn't maybe get, like, badly bent in shipping or something, right? Because um, you can damage memory sticks. Like, you you can break a memory stick. And so, um, you know, you can't even really say, like, oh, at least it guarantees that the memory kit is capable of the speed if even if the motherboard and the CPU aren't. It's like, well, <laughs> how are you going to prove that? So, I am not a fan of these speeds, uh, like, these speed bins, um, yeah, like, and I might be biased against these speeds mostly because I have, like, one CPU where DDR5-8000 kind of works on one motherboard, sometimes, sometimes I'd say, I didn't really bother to check how reliably the XMP, the DDR5-8000 works. And also, it's worth noting that the 16 gig eight, like 16 gigabit ADI is actually harder on the memory controller than 24 gigabit MDI from Hynix. So, like, a 2x24-8000 kit is actually easier to run than a 2x16-8000 kit. Um, so... Yeah, honestly, like, I see, re these are novelty kits, and, and the price kind of reflects that, even though these days it's not completely insane like it used to be. So, yeah, I would, um, like, I don't, I don't have, like, a, oh, you should buy an 8,000 from what, like, no, like, I, you shouldn't, as far as I'm concerned. Because, um, like, my experience with, like, DDR5-8000 has been that it basically just doesn't work most of the time especially with Hynix ADI. Like, I still haven't had any Hynix ADI sticks that I own do 8,000. I have a Hynix, like, a 7800 rated Hynix ADI kit, and that kit is still a compatibility nightmare, even at its XMP profile. So, 
Yeah, basically with even with Intel CPUs, actually no, that that memory kit actually works okay on AMD motherboards. Some AMD motherboards, so it's still a compatibility nightmare, right? Because it still depends on like what motherboard are you on, how good is your CPU. Um, so yeah, no, like th basically everything above seventy two hundred is like, well, how lucky do you feel? Um, and th th that's what you got to ask yourself before committing to one of these kits and thinking that the XMP profile is not going to cause blue screens. Because, um, yeah. And also, if you do buy one of these, like, at, like 7200 or higher rated kits and you enable the XMP and your pro system is having, like, stability problems, like games are randomly crashing or blue screens, stu stuff just going weird, probably just lower the XMP profile. Um, as in, like, just lower the memory speed. Like, drop it to, like, 7200 or 6800 if you're truly desperate to, to stabilize it, because that is the fastest way to get your system actually functional, rather than spending hours and hours and hours trying to, uh, wrangle the Intel memory controller into running XMPs that are supposedly functional according to motherboard QVLs. Um... Anyway, so let's move on to 2x24. Which uh, is even simpler, really. Or no, like if 2x24 follows the same rules, basically, uh, as 2x16. Um, and we're going to drop the speeds again. Now, it's worth noting with 2x24, you're obviously looking at, like, uh, there's a Micron 24 gigabit chip, and then there's Hynix uh, 24 gigabit MDI. And what you want is Hynix 24 gigabit MDI. Um, and the main difference between 24 gigabit MDI and 16 gigabit ADI is like, well, one, you've got 50% more capacity, uh, which is how you end up with 24 gig sticks. But the other difference is that this stuff is even lighter on the memory controller than the 16 gigabit uh, ADI memory chips. So, um, it clocks higher, um, but there is a trade-off. Some of the timings are somewhat weaker. Um, ultimately, because it does tend to clock higher, the timing trade-off is kind of a wash. But in like a in like a competitive benchmarking scenario, ADI still technically usually has an edge. But for daily setups, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. So if you feel like like if you need the extra capacity, just go for the extra capacity is is my thoughts on it um yeah and the nice thing with like 48 gig setups is like it won't take anywhere near as long to stress test as 64 gig setups also it'll be actually easier to run a lot easier to run actually straight up in terms of stability 2x24 uh high like 2x24 gigs should be actually the easiest for the memory control like ddr5 memory controllers to run right now um, because of Hynix 24 gigabit MDI, uh, so, yeah, I'm, like, I've not done a bunch of testing on that, but theoretically, it should actually be the least problematic, uh, memory configuration in terms of stability. So anyway, um, at this point, we do want a cast latency of 32 or lower again, because we do want to avoid those micron memory chips, so... Yeah, and there is a price increase, but, you know, it's actually proportional to the capacity increase, which is kind of fun, right? So, at like, because previously for 2x16, we were looking at around $100 for, like, a 6000 CL30 or a, or actually it was a 6000 CL32 or a 6400 CL32. Well, now we're looking at $150 um, for a 6400 CL32. So, yeah, uh, this is 32, 39, 39, 1.35 volts. Hynix 24 gigabit MDI, you can stick this, I mean, obviously if you stick this into an AMD motherboard, you're probably going to have to underclock it to like 6200 or 6000 uh, for stability, but on Intel systems, this may very well do DDR5-8000, especially if you have something like a Z790 Apex, uh, assuming that your memory, like your CPU is good enough, right? Also, the memory controller is in the CPU. Just, just want to point that out, because I've seen people think that the memory controller is in the motherboard. It isn't. Your motherboard is basically just a bunch of very fancy wires, which is why some motherboards can do higher speeds than other motherboards. Anyway, we do have... Yeah, so G-Skill basically seems to be the go-to option if you don't want to, like, spend way too much on your 24 gigabit MDI. 
Uh, and if you do feel like spending a bunch of extra, uh, there's Corsair options for like over $200 for some reason. Um, like it is 6,000 CL30. I guess the upside with something like this is that you can just like, it, if you're on an AMD CPU, you can just turn on the XMP and it, it really should just work. Um, but on an Intel system, this is like, um, this is a bit slow. Is, is what I'm going to say about that there. Whereas, honestly, like, I... Like, personally, if I was building an AMD system and I wanted a 48 gig kit, I would go for this G-Skill kit and I would just downclock it to whatever the memory controller can run. And if I don't want to worry about, like, figuring out what the memory controller can run, I would just drop it all the way to 6,000. I wouldn't even bother touching the timings. Because, seriously, going from, like, CL32 to CL30 is going to make a whole lot of not much... Like, it's just not going to make that much of a difference. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, so that's our, like, low-speed 2x24 gig options, and if we go for high speed, I mean, I'm not even sure if we have 6,800 rated kits in this. Um, and yes, we are going to skip... Actually, you know what? We're going to include 6,600 just to see what happens, but I don't have high hopes. Because, again, the rule is, you know, 6,600 or higher, we want a CL34 or lower, and we get some 6,834 G skills, and 6,834 G skills, and 7,234 team groups, and they're all, like, this is actually a good deal. Uh, and on an Intel system, like, I'd be very confident that this would actually work on an Intel system. <laughs> um, same for the 7,200 kit, actually, but at that point, you are paying a lot extra at $210 compared to, to this, and it's not going to be, like, massively faster. Um, so, yeah, and if I, uh, so now we're going to go from 7200 all the way to whatever the speed limit is, and now we don't need to worry about the cast latency, because again, the only memory chips that do clocks this high are Hynix 24 gigabit M die. so you can't accident, like, you can't, you know, end up with a Micron memory kit in DDR5 7200 or 7600 or... 8200 or 8000 because micron memory chips don't clock that high neither do samsung memory chips as far as i know so um yeah and here we have a bunch of very expensive options going all the way from you know double the price of a 2x16 kit to three times the price of a 2x16 kit so yeah um, also, like, once you get to the, like, the 7600, I would actually, like, I'd be relatively confident that this would run even on four DIMM Z790 motherboards, uh, like, motherboards with four, like, Z790 motherboards with four DIMM slots, but if your goal is something like, uh, DDR5-8000, yeah, you're looking at an Apex again, um, though at least you have higher chances of DDR5-8000 on a 2x24 kit working compared to a 2x16, um, because, yeah, the 2x24 kits are actually easier to clock high than the 2x16 kits. Um, and this isn't, like, down to the XMP profile. This is just a physical property of the Hynix 24 gigabit M die memory chips. They're just better at high signaling, like, high signaling speeds. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's 2x24. Now let's move on to some higher density setups, like 2x32 and... It's more of the same, we're just going to go straight to 6,000 and look for anything rated CL32 or lower. Um, guess what this is going to be? 6,000, 30, 38, this is dual rank, 16 gigabit A die. So basically, for these 32 gig sticks, there's just two sets of... Actually, I'm not sure it's necessarily going to be... Eh, it's probably A die, because for the dual rank memory... Like, for dual rank memory sticks, you would want the memory chips that put a little bit less stress on the memory controller. So, anyway, um, the main difference, like, the 32 gig DIMMs literally just have twice as many memory chips on them right now, because they don't make 32 gigabit memory chips uh, for DDR5 just yet. So, yeah, if you want 64 gigs of RAM, this is a perfectly good kit of memory. And interestingly enough, this seems to be more cost effective than some of the like 6,000 CL, like 2x16, 6,000 CL30 options in terms of like gigabytes of memory per dollar, uh, which is, yeah, that's kind of interesting to see. Um, 
And then we've also got another 6000 CL30 option from Silicon Power. We've got G Skill offering 6000 CL30. I wonder if these perhaps have. No, nah, it's just 30, 40, 40, but that's still Hynix. Because, um, like, the cast latency is, is the thing that basically disqualifies all the other memory chips. Um, so. Now, so we have a bunch of 6000 options, then we have some 6400 CL32. Um, now, with these 32 gig DIMMs, you do start having concerns about, like, stability again. Now, 6000 on AMD should be no problem, 6400 on Intel should also be no problem. 6400 on AMD, you're gonna have to get lucky with the CPU, so I would recommend that you actually just go for 6000 CL30, and then in the future, if you feel, you know, like you want to spend a lot of time stress testing your memory sticks, uh, yeah, you could commit to trying to overclock higher, because again, these are all gonna be Hynix, uh, like, I guess there's still a very small chance that you might get 16 gigabit MDI in some of these kits, but even then, like, it's still going to potentially be able to overclock to, say, 6200, 6400, um, if you're on an AMD, si which 6400 is basically going to be the limit if you're on an AMD system, so, yeah. Like, literally all of these. Like, personally, I would obviously go for the cheapest ones, because there's, in my opinion, no reason to spend extra to get the same memory chips from a different brand. Especially because, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these brands use the same PCB factories. And, uh, there are, like, standard PCB layouts for DDR5 memory sticks, so a lot of the, like less well-known brands will probably just be using the standard DDR5 PCB layout, which in many scenarios can actually help compatibility rather than harm it, because, like, I've had weird experiences with memory stick, like, with memory sticks having, like, heavily customized PCBs and then not running properly on certain motherboards. Um, and by heavily customized PCBs, I'm mainly thinking of, like, some RGB memory kits from Corsair. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, so for 2x32 at, like, DDR5-6000, you know, CL32 or lower, it's Hynix. Buy it. Like, I'm not gonna, you know, there's not really much more to it than that as far as I'm concerned. Now, if we keep going, going up in speed, uh, the compatibility issues become a concern, not so much what it's gonna be. Actually, I guess, technically, you could get some Micron memory chips. Um... So, but we're still going to follow the same rule. Like, if you're going over 6600, you're going to want CL34 or lower. And you don't really have many options. There's a 6800 CL34 from G-Scale, a 6600 CL32 from Corsair. I would be kind of worried that this might not work on all Intel motherboards, whereas this really should. Um, yeah. But, man, that price premium is insane. Actually, that's not that bad compared to the 6,000 rated kits. Oh, there was also 6,400 rated kits that weren't that expensive, so 6,600 for $240 seems kind of silly. Um, yeah, and I mean, if we keep raising the speed... Wait, does... The... Okay, so now we only get 6,800 rated G-Skill kits. I'm assuming if we go to 36, we don't get any more options. 38, we still don't get any more options, and... Oh, there's a... Um... No. <laughs> Actually, just no. <laughs> that, that right there, so... I would not, like... This is Corsair, so I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if this was always Hynix, but this speed bin, like, from the timings, this is suspiciously loose. Like, this looks like they really want to squeeze something else into this speed bin, um, because these timings look like they belong to a Micron memory stick. Um, and also, this is insanely expensive, so yeah, I'm just gonna go no. That's, that's a no. Um, I would not recommend that. Also, it's going to just be, like, like going from 34 to 4, like, especially since we're going all the way from, like, we're not going from, like, like, you know, if we're going from, like, CL32 to 30, doesn't really matter as far as I'm concerned, but we aren't talking about going from 32 to, to 30, or from, like, TRCD 38 to 36, or 36 to... 
to 40, right? Which admittedly 36 to 40 is actually starting to get kind of significant. But here we're talking about going from uh, 3445 to 4050. So five, like six more, yeah, six more cycles of cast latency and five more cycles of TRCD. And it's just like, okay, actually, and you get to pay more. No, just no. This is big no. Um, so anyway, so for two by thir 32 kits, you don't really have like, there's not really a lot of high speed options, which you'd expect because these kits do... Um, like, they do put more stress on the memory controller, so you can't, like, the ma memory manufacturers aren't going to be able to clock these as high. Or, they're not going to be able to clock, like, they're not going to be able to produce XMP profiles with any guarantee of reliability. Like, technically, if you get lucky with, uh, with the right motherboard and the right CPU, 2x32 setups can go all the way up to, like, 7200 and maybe even a bit above that. But right motherboard and right CPU, right? Whereas, like, G-Skill and Corsair, like, they want these kits to work on a lot of motherboards, not just, like, some motherboards with very few CPUs. So that's why you don't really, like, why we're not seeing, like, a 7200 bin. Um, right? Yeah, we're, we're just not seeing a 7200 bin for 2x32. Um, so anyway, we're going to drop back down to 6,000, and now we're going to move on to 2x48. Now, 2x48 should actually clock better than uh, uh, than 2x32 does, but we're still going to follow that same rule at 6,000 of we want CL32 or lower, because that rule eliminates all of the Micron-based memory kits, and those do exist uh, in, in 48 gig capacities, uh, or at least they can exist. I'm, <laughs> I've not actually seen any myself, but they can. So we want to make it absolutely impossible to accidentally end up, end up with one of those. And pricing-wise, yeah, this this is going to be kind of rough. Um, and again, like a kit like this, this is 6400, so if you're on AMD, you're going to want, and you buy one of these, you're probably going to want to underclock it to 6000. Um, but yeah, 3239, this is, this is just a Hynix 24 gigabit MDI bin. Um... And we also have some CL30 options from Corsair, so, you know, this will be a bit easier to set up, if, especially if you're on AMD, because you don't actually have to think about it, you just enable the XMP, also this is actually quite tight. Um, and there's not that big a price difference. So, yeah, depending on how much you value the convenience, um, this is potentially a better, like, the, for AMD this would be a better option than this, but on Intel I would actually go for the extra memory speed. Um, so... Yeah, especially since the extra memory speed costs less, in this case. But on AMD, like, the main concern is that you might not, like, this might very well, this very well could be unstable, so you might have to underclock it, at which point it's like, eh, you might be better off just buying a kit where, you know, and also you get slightly tighter timings, so, yeah, I, I think, like, this would be, it depends on, you know, I'm going to leave that decision up to you. Like, this is going to be more... This is going to be slightly better on AMD in terms of just, like, setup. In terms of overclocking, I would actually expect these to be exactly the same. Because it's 2 by 40 like, it, it's four, 48 gig dims in Hynix 24 gigabit MDI speed bins. So, like, it's not like you're going to get any other memory chips in them. Um, so... Anyway, uh, and then moving through, yeah, we just have, oh, and we have a Corsair 6600CL32 option, which is an interesting speed bin, but that is not an interesting price. Oh, we also have it over here as well. That Yeah, that is an interesting speed bin. Not viable on AMD systems, of course. Um, or, well, technically, I have heard of some AMD CPUs being able to do 6600 in, in one to one mode, but very rare. Actually, Corsair even has that 6600 CL32 bin in, like, not insane pricing. This would be an interesting option for Intel systems. Yeah, so... This is... This, that's an option. That I think, should, like, depending on what you're looking for, worth considering. And 
I'm not sure if we're going to see any higher speed bins, but anyway, from 6600 up, I'm thinking CL34. And yeah, and we got some 6800 from G-Skill. I think G-Skill is even supposed to have a 7200 bin, but I'm not sure if that's made it to PC Part Picker yet. Oh, we have some 6800 CL36 from Team Group. And that is in... Yeah, Hynix timing. It's a bit on the loose side for just, for just 6800, though. Yeah, that's a bit loose. But, like, it, it's still going to be Hynix. Though, interestingly enough, I don't think price-wise... So, funnily enough, Corsair actually has the best price here with their 6600 CL32 bin. And honestly... Like, we're going to have to take a closer look at the, the primary timings here. 3239 versus... 3446. Like, this is still a Hynix bin, but per, yeah, actually I'd rather have this at that point. Because, like, the lower speed means that, like, from a reliability perspective, the ex like, like, I'd be pretty surprised if this didn't work. But, you know, the lower the, the memory speed you're trying to push, the higher the probability that it's actually going to work. Um, and with dual rank kits, also, like, this has, like, these timings are significantly better. Like, 3239 compared to 3446, like, that is, that is quite a difference. This is also more expensive. Yeah, honestly, I would actually take the 6600 kit instead. Because, um, like, the XMP on this is going to, like, be easier to run. Performance-wise, it should be about the same. Maybe slightly better. I'd Like, the latency should be better, bandwidth slightly down, so... Kind of, kind of a, tr like... Actually, it might actually win on bandwidth, just because the TRCD is so much lower. Um, depends on the workload, ultimately. But yeah, I, I'd go with this. Just, also, it's cheaper. That, that helps. <laughs> that definitely helps. Um, though, if the prices were reversed, I'd take the G-Skill kit. Um, though, honest, although, actually, I'd probably go for, like, a 6400 CL32 or something in, in these, in these capacities, and then just overclock it myself, but, you know, if you don't want to deal with that, then obviously 6600 CL32 with TRCD39, like, this is, this is actually a really interesting speed bin. Um, yeah, this is pretty neat. So, anyway, uh, let's keep going. Um, so that covers all of the like normal capacities, right? Your two by like your two by sixteen, your two by twenty four, your two by thirty two, your two by forty eight, and now we get into the territory of things that I almost wish the DDR five spec didn't allow for them. Four by thirty two. Um. Oh man, these, the, yeah. Hmm. So, personally, like, so on one hand, if you buy a 4x32 kit, that's like actually a 4x32 kit, you might have a better time trying to get support from the manufacturer if you run into any compatibility issues. On the flip side, I have absolutely no idea what they're putting in a 5600 40 40 40 kit um well actually I, it's probably not micron and it's probably not this is probably hynix just by nature of all the other memory chips being kind of a pain to run at these speeds um yeah because like i'm like this is, this speed is too high to be Hynix, uh, I mean, to be Micron's first 16 gigabit memory chip. The timings are, I'm relatively certain, too low for the second memory chip. Like, I think Hynix, uh, I mean, Micron's second 16 gigabit memory, I mean, the 24 gigabit Micron memory chip, which also gets cut down into a 16 gig variant, um... I don't think that does TRCD40. 
Not at 1.25 volts. At 5600. At like 5200 maybe, but at 5600 no. Um, so this should be Hynix, actually. Um, yeah, so I might, like, like I, you know, in this scenario, like, when you're going for 128 gigs, like, you just don't have many good options. Like, personally, what I would probably do is, you know, buy two 2x32 two kits. And actually, I probably wouldn't even do that. I'd probably go for two 2x48s. Two um, because the 24 gigabit memory chips should really be a lot easier to run for the memory controller. Um, and also for 4x48, we just have awful options. Like 5,238. Though, again, I'm not sure that this could be... Yeah, if this is flat 38, this is probably... Dare I say it's Hynix? It, like, I think this is too tight to be Micron. <laughs> Could be Samsung, but I don't, like, the thing is the Samsung memory chips supposed, like, seem to be kind of heavy on the memory controller, so I don't know, and actually, no, I'm not aware of a 24 gigabit Samsung memory chip just yet, so, yeah, so this couldn't be Samsung. So, yeah, I think if you're going for, like, really high capacities, but man, that is really expensive. Though it's even, like, I don't think it's actually that much more expensive than the 2x48 options we were looking at. So this is the thing, once you get into these, like, super high capacities, it's just like, I do not envy you. If you need this much RAM to do your, whatever it is you do with your computer, I'm, I'm assuming, like, data analysis, like, your, some kind of workstation application. I wouldn't, know. I don't do any work. Um, I just make videos. <laughs> so, and I don't edit them. So I don't, you know, like, I guess if you're like a video editor or you do rendering or something like that, you might need an absolute ton of RAM. And in that scenario, it's like, man, well, I hope at least, like, hopefully you don't need to run it very fast. And you probably don't want to overclock it because the, the stability testing is going to take like a month, right? Just because you do actually need to go through all of that memory capacity. And that is going to go very, very slowly, right? Like, it will literally take, like, going from, say, 32 gigs to 192, I'm actually going to just calculate this, because off the top of my head, I don't know, so 192 divided by 32, it is going to take six times as much time to stress test your memory setup if you have 192 gigs compared to 32 gigs. Um, it will, yeah, like, your computer is basically going to be unusable for, like, a week. Um, you probably don't want to do that. So, yeah, but if I, so I actually, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just not gonna, like, I don't want to give advice for those super high density configurations. Like, I really don't. Because on one hand, it's like, I know that person, like, if I was messing around with that kind of thing, then I would probably go for like two, two, two 32 gig kits of a Hynix speed bin, so like a 6000 CL30 or 32, um, or two, like two 2x48 two kits in like 6000 CL32 or 6400 CL32, and then manually, you know, set them up. Um, but the thing is, like, I don't actually need to use the system for, for work, right? Like, it's a test bench. It can sit here and run stress tests for 24 hours or two days. Honestly, for 192 gigs, it might actually take two days to run the stress test. Um, cause that's just so much damn RAM. Um, and yeah, like, I, I do not envy you if you need that much RAM. Um, because... Like, it is, it is really hard on the memory controller. Um, and, like, it, like your speed options, I, I guess, like, I would probably go and take my chances with the 4x48 kits. Um, of course, like, yeah, they are way more expensive. Actually, I think... So this is 3.4, this is 3.49, yeah, so actually in terms of price per gigabyte, it's not that bad. It's not like they're, you know, like, 
you're not getting like you're not paying massively extra for the extra extra capacity um but yeah the stress testing on that is gonna take for freaking ever um so that's gonna be fun if you decide to actually stress test it which i'm assuming most people who go with memory densities this high i'm assuming they don't want to run stress tests which is kind of scary to me to think about because like these capacities are really hard on the memory controller like officially actually i might actually just pull up the intel documentation um it's really not very intelligible um for 13th gen yeah it should be this um let me just wait i opened it wrong there so here's here's the oh it opened automatically to the correct page yeah so when you're going with a 4x32 or a 4x48 setup, what you're running is two DIMMs per uh, memory channel, and then two ranks of memory, of, of memory on each DIMM. Officially, Intel supports DDR5-3600 for that. Right? So technically, like, like this is a, like... Compared to Intel spec, this is 2,000 mega transfers out of spec. Right? Like, this is a significant overclock over what Intel actually guarantees as working um, for 13th gen. And AMD's the same. Like, they also don't guarantee anything more than 3,600 for a 4x32 or 4x48 setup. So for for these yeah for these memory configurations it's just like man <laughs> I I don't I don't really know what to tell you um like you could take your chances with like you know taking two 6000 rated kits or like 6 like 6400 6000 rated kits and like manually overclocking them but then then the problem is like if it doesn't work um, I mean, I guess you can always just go back to just running it at 3600, um, which, is, you know, but yeah, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I don't have any really good suggestions here, or at least I don't have any suggestions that I'm confident in because like, like, even Intel doesn't think this should work at DDR5 speeds. This is literally DDR4. <laughs> no, it's not literally DDR4, but, like, it, you're running DDR5 at, like, DDR4 speeds because of how hard it is to just reliably, you know, send signals to four sets of memory chips. Because that's, like, the whole issue is, like, each of these memory sticks has two sets of memory chips on it. Um, and then there's another one of these sticks with another two sets of memory chips attached to the same channel. Um, and that makes it really, really hard for the memory controller to, well, send signals reliably to all of the memory sticks. Um, and that's why, like, these, like, why these memory configurations only, like they don't offer them in anything higher than 5600 though. I am surprised that they're not offering the 48 gig dims in higher speeds. Because as far as I know, they should actually be more stable than the sixty than the thirty two gig dims, um, even at high speeds. So I guess they haven't just got like gone through the val. Maybe they haven't managed to get through the validation processes for that yet, or it's like there just isn't demand for high speed four by forty eight setups, or there was so many issues with the four by thirty two that they don't even want to take, like they don't even want to offer it. Um, yeah, I, I was I was kind of hoping there'd be more options here, but no, there 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 isn't. Um, so yeah, if you want to like if you want to take your chances with like putting two state like two separate kits together for a high capacity setup, I would definitely go two by forty eight rather than two by thirty two. Um, and then I would just go for like a six thousand CL. Uh, actually, I wonder if you have a fifty six hundred CL twenty eight option. Um. Let's see. You don't. Well, that makes that simple. So yeah, just like 32. With a speed of 6,000 or higher. And then just 
manually underclock what, which one of these kit like buy two of these and then manually underclock them until it works um with any luck you'll get like six thousand to work um incredible luck in that case i'd say but I i'm not sure like i the thing is i don't test these like super high density setups because they're a pain to test um yeah, also I don't have this much RAM. That that also, you know, puts a serious damper on that. But even if I did, I wouldn't want to test this because like like it takes literally six times longer to stress test one of these configurations than a uh than a 32 gig configuration. Um right? So yeah, like honestly, even one of these 96 gig kits is gonna take three times longer to stress test than a uh 32 gig kit. Right, so, yeah, like, al already I wouldn't be a huge fan of that. <laughs> but then you double that again, and it's just like, oh, oh no. <laughs> so anyway, hopefully this is somewhat helpful, and the basic rules are, like, six, like, actually, yeah, so, uh, oh man, I should have written this out in advance. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna write it down right now. We're gonna add some text here. Um, so, 2 by 16 and you want, like, si for memory speeds, well, actually, it doesn't matter. Like, for 2 by 16 or 2 by 24, right, you want memory, like, from 6,000 to 6,400, you want CL32 or less. Um, right? Oh, and it doesn't doesn't fit. There, I fixed it. Um, yeah, so actually, and actually this is true for all of these. 2 by 32, 2 by 48. Um, there. And actually, like, well, Corsair does have those 6600 CL32 bins, so we should include those, because those are actually really cool bins, depending on if you can find them at a reasonable price. Because some of them are kind of silly in, in, like, the price that they come at, and some of them... The price is actually competitive with some of the 6800 options. Anyway, for 6800 to, like... Well, 6800 and up, you want... Like... Okay, no, I shouldn't say 6800 and up. Um, 6800 to, like, 7200, you want 30, CL34 or lower, again. Um, and then for 7200 plus all Hynix. Like, it, it's just physically impossible for any other memory chips right now to do speeds higher than 7200. So you don't have to worry about the cast latency. And there are some, like, really weirdly loose bins. Like, I have a memory kit that's 8000 CL38 TRCD52, and without even raising the voltage, I can drop the TRCD by four, four clock cycles. So it's just like they evidently didn't want to put that, like... I'm not sure why manufacturers do that, where, where they just leave, like, a ton of headroom on some of the timings. Um, but, yeah, that does happen. And so, you know, there's not... But the thing is, like, you don't really need to worry about, like, the timings once you go above 7200, because there's no other memory chips that do those kinds of speeds. So... Yeah. So, that that's sort of your basic rules for for shopping for ddr5 at least if you care about overclocking if you don't care about overclocking then i don't know why you're watching this video so yeah that's it for the video so thank you for watching like share subscribe leave any leave any comments questions suggestions down in the comment section below if you'd like to support what i do here with actually hardcore overclocking i have a patreon there's a link to that down in the description below there's also the ahoc teespring store where you can pick up shirts hoodies posters you know the usual uh, YouTuber merch, and I've also got a band camp. There's a link to that down in the description below as well. And that's it for the video, so thank you for watching, and goodbye!